Okay, well, this is uh, what's called an Anagama wood fire kill. And uh, this project started uh, about 12 days ago. And so uh, it's pretty amazing to be able to build a kill of this size uh, in that amount of time. It was, um, we had a great crew working, um, really good solid crew every day. And um, what we started with was we started with a concrete foundation here. Um, and um, they, they poured that before I got here. But this is a, the concrete foundation runs the whole length of the kill and uh, actually runs another um, you know, six or eight inches outside of this wall here. Then what we do is we, we first lay a layer of uh, what's called insulating soft brick. Um, what this does is this helps insulate the concrete pad from the heat from the kill. Uh, so these are three inch bricks. We can just get away with one layer of those. And then these are three inch hard brick. Um, all the bricks in the kill are a high duty refractory uh, hard brick. And uh, they're, they're uh, fire brick that comes from uh, you know, big refractory uh, companies. These are uh, rated for 3,000 degrees. And uh, this kill, I think, I figured it out to be about, about 5,000 bricks, probably 5,500. Uh, then we started with the uh, straight walls, what I call straight walls here up to this point. Um, and we had about 10 courses or so. And um, basically, the way that we started was we, we snapped a center line down the kill here. And uh, I knew that I wanted this to be 54 inches wide here. And um, so we started by laying this front section out here, this straight wall here. And uh, then we figured out where we wanted to be in the back, and I figured out where the chimney was. And then we just basically eyeballed a real nice curve to come around to connect the front and the back. Um, so after we had the first, this first layer laid, then um, we just you know, came through here and just, this is all dry set in here, there's no mortar and uh, we laid these straight walls um, and we did that all the first day. We, we went all the way around, all the way through the kill, um, along the flue run and around the base of the chimney and uh, that first day actually we did stack about four feet of the chimney that first day so that was a pretty incredible first day. <laughs> um, I thought that would be like two days to do that stuff and um, then the next, um, the next thing we did was we built the arch form. The arch form is a wooden form um, that is built for the same shape here. Uh, and what that does is it holds up the, the brick arch um, while we build it and until we get the dirt around the outside of the kill. After we did that, we covered the kill um, with two layers of clay. Uh, it's clay and a lot of sand. It's, um, it's probably mostly sand, actually. It's just enough clay to hold it together. The first layer is um, about three, three and a half inches thick. And uh, that was, I believe, it was about 25 or 30 batches. So it was a, co a couple, three tons, probably. And um, we lay that in there one day and then let that dry overnight. And then we lay a, a layer on top of that with the same mixture of sand, um, clay, and a little Portland cement. And that Portland is just the layer, it's about an inch, you know, maybe on the outside. 
and that just um, seals up the kill and gives it a little bit more strength and uh, a little bit more uh, weather resistant, you know, if the rain hits the back of the kill or whatever. Um, as the arch comes down right here, as it, this is a straight wall, as the arch comes into it right there, there's what's called a skew back brick, which is this brick here, right at the base of the arch. And the importance of that skew back is that this pressure, the arch comes down like this, and it, it pushes pressure kind of in outward angles like that. And so what we want is that we want this dirt level to be up higher than the skew here. So we want that dirt level to support the weight of the arch. As the arch pushes into the ground, you always want that dirt to be a little higher than that skew. So in this case, it's, um, it's almost a foot higher. It's probably about a foot higher. So um, after the dirt was all done and the clay was all done on the outside, uh, we removed the form out. The, the wooden form was propped up on cinder blocks and bricks and shim, wood shims. And um, so we put a little sand in between the shims so they could kind of slide a little bit. And then, um, yes, I guess it was yesterday, we just knocked the shims out and we dropped the whole thing down about a foot. And then we just, you know, we just dragged it out the front and it came out in one piece, um, which was really nice that it came out in one piece. <laughs> Sometimes it's kind of a struggle. <laughs> um, um, the front of the kill, from about here forward, this is, um, the flame will be moving fairly slow through this area. Uh, this is the biggest part of the kill. It's the widest and the tallest. And so the actual flame velocity will be a little slower up here. But as it comes down here and it gets closer and closer to this opening in the back, this opening in the back is um, 17 inches wide by 20 inches high. And so that little area right there, um, it, you know, all this flame in the front of the kill on this other 20 feet here, all that flame has to go through that little spot back here. And so back here is a different area where you get much higher, um, the flame is moving a lot faster there, so the, the velocity is much higher. And so the flashing tends to be a little bit more distinct. Um, the ass direction is, uh, the ass direction is, is much more uh, direct. So this will be the main one that will be used during the firing. Um, there's one in the back that will be used during the cooling, but this is, this is the main functional damper here. It's, um, this is another passive air damper here. Um, these will also be used during the firing a little bit too. Um, the way that a passive air damper system works is that um, the, the, ch the chimney will always draw air from where it's easiest to draw from. And so if you open these, or if you open it maybe, you know, take a couple bricks out of there so you have a few different holes, um, then the chimney will draw some of its air through this hole because it's easier. Um, won't be able to draw all of the air through, so it'll still be drawing air through the front but typically what I use is I'll get it close with the active damper and I'll fine tune it with the passives. I'll maybe have one brick out and, and it's amazing. You wouldn't think a big chimney like this would be affected by just one brick out. But it is pretty amazing. You can really fine tune the draw that way. Um, so I like fairly large chimneys. They're just a preference of mine. Uh, it's like having another gear in your car. It's good to have it. Don Wrights and, and Don Bendel have been some of my, my biggest teachers in wood firing. And they were both extremely affected by a, um, a Japanese potter and ceramic artist called Yukio Yamamoto. And uh, he's passed away just in the last couple of years, but, um, but uh, I never had the chance to meet him. I always wanted to, but I never, uh, he, it, when he got old, he got pretty sick and he couldn't come to the States anymore. But he always, uh, apparently when, he, when, when they lit the kill, uh, he would always pray for problems, um, which is a, just an interesting way of looking at it. It's like, well, we're all in this to, to learn and to come together and figure things out and to become a more cohesive group. And, and uh, you know, if everything goes smoothly, then maybe you're not learning anything. <laughs> you know, so he would always pray for problems and, and that was pretty cool. So, you know, yeah, that was pretty neat to hear that. But yeah, it's, a neat, it's so neat for people to come together and do this. And what the Stokes are doing here is really, I mean, they should really be commended for what, what their vision is. And, um, for this, for getting this, I mean, this is just one part of this grand project here, you know. And uh, it's just so neat to see that things like this happening around the country, different, they're fairly rare, but um, to really see, see them create an environment, um, and this is kind of the first big part of that, to create an environment where artists can come and work with other people and, and uh, work on their ideas and, and different concepts and things like that. I think they should really be proud of what they're doing. 
You know, it's really neat to see that. And I feel really proud to be a part of that. And it sounds kind of cheesy, but it's like, I mean, it's really, I'm really proud to come in at, at this level here. It's like, I mean, I feel honored to have the first, to be, to build the first one. I mean, you know, a lot of, you know, I put a lot of faith in you, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's pretty neat. I really like the, it's been a great project too. I mean, the crew has been awesome. It really, um, everything has been really smooth, you know, so.